Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. In March of 2014, a photograph surfaced on the website Irish Central, which essentially is a website dedicated to sharing Irish life with the rest of the world. And it was a rather unusual photograph to appear on this website because unlike the usual news or local stories and happenings that were being broadcasted onto the site via articles, this was a cryptozoological story, which again, doesn't exactly come up very often on Irish Central, or for that matter, really, any other blog-like website. The photograph is an exceptionally clear one, and possibly because of this, but mostly because of the alleged content of the photograph, it sparked a lot of debate surrounding Irish folklore, and specifically on one of Ireland's supposedly endemic cryptids known as the Dovarku. I myself actually have a bit of a personal connection to the photograph and the story behind it, so there's a bit of background information surrounding not just the photograph's backstory, but also the search for the photograph that are necessary to discuss in terms of kind of getting a clear picture of what this photograph is supposed to be. To start off with perhaps the most important factor of the photograph, its alleged subject, the Dovarku, or Dovarku, is an older figure in Old Irish folklore, possibly at least dating back to the early 1700s, and probably prior. The first archaeological evidence that we have of references and reliefs to this creature came in around 1722, being the year, supposedly, that one or two of these creatures was actually accredited with a death in the area of Glenade Loch in northwestern Ireland. And there's actually a grave site in the area that is attributed to Grace McLowan, who is supposedly the person who experienced a fatal attack uh, while encountering one or two Dovarkus. As for the Dovarku itself, the Dovarku is often described in English terms as a king, master, or giant otter. Essentially, the idea behind what it looks like, its name meaning water hound, is this mammalian, dog-like creature that has these sort of very large proportions and aggressive attributes, and is most often described as like a giant otter of some kind, with more, perhaps, unusual and formidable physical features. There's a surprising amount of detailed Dowarku sightings across the centuries, with descriptions that really kind of paint an interesting picture of what this species, if it even exists, might be. And that's kind of also why this photograph was so interesting to so many people when it first came out. The photograph was first posted on, again, the website Irish Central in an article written by Cormac McConnell, who essentially relayed this story about an area he referred to as Cleanag Loch, which apparently he had neighbors in who had experienced flooding in the area due to the Fergus and Shannon rivers overflowing at the tidal estuaries. And as this happened, apparently one of the neighbors, who was labeled as Joan White, witnessed this interesting animal uh, with a fish in its jaws, which she believed to have been a pike, and she got a very clear photograph of what she said was this animal that she had seen as it was escaping back into the water. The creature was actually kind of locally famous for a while after this, being referred to as the clean monster. For a while, this photograph became as elusive as the subject in it itself, which many believed when looking at it to be a Dowarku. The photograph couldn't be traced down easily, at the very least, for a long time. I myself was initially exposed to the photograph sometime in, if I'm not mistaken, 2017 or 2018, and had seen it only a few times, and between then and just a few days ago, had had a lot of trouble tracking down the photograph again to the point where I'd actually sketched what I recall the photograph looking like and put it out onto the internet to see if anybody could track down the references that I had used. And while that attempt was unsuccessful, eventually, as I previously mentioned, the photograph did pop back up again in easily searchable areas, and finally I was able to actually save a copy of the photo as well as the account related to it, which I would like to read to give some full context 
as opposed to just the rough backstory that I've already provided. According to the article written by, again, Cormac McConnell, quote, The land is saturated and the tidal estuary of the Shannon and Fergus spilled over into the locks which dot the flatlands. And one of those locks, thankfully not too near us to cause concern, is the normally beautiful and serene Cleanac Lock, behind the home of our good neighbors Jimmy and Joanne White across the road. And what happened next a few afternoons ago is that artist Joanne was in one of the sheds at the rear of their garden, running down to the lock, when she glanced out the window and was instantly riveted to the pot. For there at the verge, only a few yards away from her, was this predatory creature of a species she had not seen before, and she is country-raised. And it was sitting proudly over a fish, maybe six or seven pounds in weight, and still twitching in mortal agony. Our Joanne ran back up to the house to get Jimmy's camera. When she returned to the shed a few minutes later, the creature, which has since become known as the Kleenag Monster, had re-entered the lock and was swimming away with a large fish, probably a pike, gripped firmly in its huge jaws. A fearsome sight indeed, but Joanne retained her composure and her camera and secured a shot which, in my view at least, and in that of other neighbors, is at least as menacing as those old shots of the legendary Loch Ness Monster. Now, that's essentially the story told again by somebody who is actually in contact and seems to be a friend of this alleged eyewitness and photographer, Joanne White. No contact information for Joanne White is given, and the location is actually hard to pin down as a location specifically called Kleenag Lock is pretty hard to find so far in my own research. It doesn't, of course, mean that it's on no map, but it seems the most conventional maps accessible online do not label where Kleenag Lock is. That being said, there is an area close to one of the coastal indents of the western side of Ireland where the Fergus River and the Shannon River split off that is called Clenag, which might be the flatland area where this took place. Might not pin down the exact lock by doing that, but we seem to have the general region down. Apparently, the locals attempted to posit some explanations like it could be a common otter, it could even be a mink, and looking at the photo, of course, the, the crowning jewel of this whole story, it doesn't exactly seem to fit the bill for either of those subjects. Going over the actual visual appearance of this animal, it resembles an otter greatly, especially in the sort of curved and sleek form of the main torso. There appears to either be a hefty leg, tail, or both near the rear, and again, you can kind of see that curvy nature that otters and similar animals are very much known for. But the head is really where this differs from known species. The neck is incredibly thick, and the head itself is, for lack of a better term, built like a brick. It's very rectangular and broad, and really gives a sense of size. And looking at the fish that appears to be in its mouth, and if you zoom in, you can actually see some of these scaling patterns, which does suggest it is a fish of some kind. If that is a pike, there's kind of a difficulty in estimating the size of this creature, but having a pike whose side is facing the camera, or at least what could be a pike, we can kind of begin to compare that to other photos of, you know, an average-sized pike, a common-sized pike, and try to get a size estimate based off of that. In short, the process that's been undergone for this video is to try and recreate the head to get a more detailed look at what it could look like, as well as a look at the size of the creature using that head model. And the way that we've done that is we've actually taken, as I said before, a, a photograph of someone holding up a regular sized pike, compared that width of the body of the pike to the width of the body of the fish in the photo, and scaled those photos together so that the widths match. Doing so, we can kind of look at that and say, okay, well, compared to someone like a close to six foot tall person, how large is this creature? And what would the head have to look like on that? And what we get first off with the head is this very robust head with these, what appear to be tiny pointed ears. Now, of course, that's speculation and all of this is speculation because there is possibility that we're looking at this photograph the wrong way. However, if we're going off of a simple surface observation, what we really kind of see is something that looks akin to a cross between a wolf and an otter, which, to be completely fair, is traditionally what the Dowarku is described as. So much so that its name actually derives from a phrase meaning waterhound, which is also used to refer to the common otter. 
if the head does resemble this model and the guesses that are made on it, which some features like the nose and the eye are, are pretty much not guesses, but some things like the structure of the ear do take some liberty in assuming that we're not looking at it from the wrong angle or something like that. Either way, we do have this animal with this very robust, almost canine-like head and this very robust and thick neck, especially compared with what we would expect the European otter, which is the only otter species recognized in Ireland, to look like. The otter, while very similar, is completely different in terms of being able to be called the same species from whatever specimen is in this photograph. And if we take what the eyewitness said into account, as well as the average sizing of those pike models we were talking about before, we get a creature that, laying on its side, which is what it appears to be doing in the photograph, is probably close to around two feet tall, meaning that if at the shoulder it might be close to maybe two and a half feet tall, which is quite tall for a specimen to be either a mink or a common European otter. This, of course, does not necessarily rule out things like digital editing or, again, the angle of the photo being off. In fact, that's a really important part of this to stress because we have only this one angle of this creature to work with. We do not have other views of this animal, and working with just that side, at the end of the day, we may be interpreting this photo entirely wrong. But comparing it to what the eyewitness described and what the photographer took a photo of, of course, them also being the same person, we kind of seem to be painting a consistent picture between the model of this animal and what the animal actually looks like. So, of course, that leaves the question, what is it if it is real? If it is real, it is very unlikely to be a European otter, and it's almost impossible that it's a mink unless there is some kind of unknown gigantism taking place in some of the mink population, or some kind of muscular mutation that may be present in some of the European otter population, both of which would have to have been new on the scene and not observed before, which could still be the case. That's the thing about the photo, is it doesn't give us a look at the genetics, obviously. It gives us a look at the visual aspects. What seems to be the case is that whatever is in this photo, whether that's this is what a known animal looks like from a weird angle, whether that's cases of gigantism that we're not aware of, whether it's mutations we're not aware of, whether it's a new species, whatever this is, if the eyewitness testimony is consistent with the photo in a sense that the encounter was real, this appears to be maybe not a traditional Dowar coup, but definitely the thing that is called a Dowar coup. And what I mean by that is if you believe that the Dowarku is a real species of its own, or if you believe that the Dowarku is a legend that is perpetuated by misidentification, whatever it is that is in this photo is the best possible model that we could possibly have in a single photograph for whatever phenomenon fuels the legend of the Dowarku. Again, whether or not this is a real animal is still in question, but what is certain is that this is the image that the roots of the legend are directly connected to. Not the photo itself, but whatever the image being presented in the photo really is. I enjoy talking about this photograph, but it's a tough one to talk about because there is that personal connection with my search for the photograph over the last few years. And of course, I don't want to overstep any scientific boundaries by suggesting that this is a real animal or even a new species. But I do think it is at the very least anthropologically important to note that this is exactly what the Dowarku was described as. And whatever phenomenon this person, Joanne White, captured on film on her camera is the phenomenon that fuels the modern iterations of the Dowarku legend. Whether or not that means that it's a real, living, breathing Dowarku is, of course, not solved by this one case. I would love to know what all of you think about this and its connection to the water Dowarku stories, and I would just like to say thank you for tuning in, and that being said, until next time.